Hello and welcome to a new series of videos from The Flying Reporter, Inside the Hangar. And I'm with the certifying engineer from maintenance organisation Aero Anglia, Aidan Brown. And this looks like a set from Blue Peter, um, <laughs> uh, which our, our, our British viewers will uh, know. A steaming pot over here, a pot of oil here and bottles of oil. Yes, we're talking oil today because as a pilot and owner, I haven't got the slightest idea uh, what oil does what because there are so many different types. I mean, even for your car engine, you go into the, 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 the car shop and you're, you're, you're faced with this, these shelves and shelves of oil. We're talking aviation oil. Let's start with what the oil does, first of all. Yeah. Um, I think I come up with five things. Yep. Lubricate is the one that everybody knows. I mean, it's wet and slippery and it clings onto surfaces and prevents them from scuffing directly against yep. each other. Cooling. Cooling is important in an aircraft engine. Um, they're air cooled, the air can only cool the outside. Mm. The oil does a very good job of cooling the inside. It's sprayed often and directly at the bottom of the piston inside the cylinder. It carries away a lot of heat mm -hmm. that can't be got rid of by mm. air. Cleaning, it's, it's, most of these oils have a, a uh, dispersant in them, which is a polar molecule that enables it to hold very, very fine things in suspension. Combustion products, lead, metallic residues. Um, anything that can't be filtered out can be held in suspension and dumped at the oil change. Sealing, mm -hmm. it does a good job at the piston ring to cylinder wall interface. Um, the film of oil is quite important there in uh, preventing wear and forming a good seal. Um, and corrosion prevention. Mm -hmm. After shutdown, you're going to hope that the oil will leave a nice film of corrosion preventative, you know, oil on everything. Yeah. It's really the only thing when you're not using the aeroplane that stops the, the steel parts yeah. and, and metal parts of the engine going rotten. So in terms of understanding what type of oil does what, and which oil we should have in our engine at different times of the year or different cycles of the engine. Um, I mean, we've got the, the four, I think, main yeah. types here. There are other types and other brands, of course. Um, what we're starting with here, we've got, we've got 80. That's so what does 80 mean? 80 with no letters usually means it's a straight mineral oil. Um, and that's a single grade, not a multi-viscosity. It's dead creatures from the ground very few additives, it's blended to meet the specification. And you can put it in your engine because it meets the spec for Lycoming and Continental, this one. Yep. Um, and 80 is for what? What does 80 mean? Normally, use, 80 is the viscosity. Right. We'll talk about that in a bit. Yeah. But the straight mineral oil is usually used for bedding in a, a new engine. Oh, that's the, the straight mineral oil. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, gosh, yeah. So it has very few additives. It may have a, something to stop it foaming and a poor point improver. So it might but not be particularly good at getting rid of particles. It no, might not be great at corrosion prevention, no, but it does the job of cooling and, and lubricating. It does that and it's quite important for bedding a new engine. We come down to the cylinder piston interface again. Yep. Uh, you would use generally a straight mineral oil for that, except on some Lycoming turbocharged engines where they say okay. go straight to dispersant. This one then, what's that got on it? That's W100. Yeah. So what are we doing with that one? The 100 means it's a slightly higher viscosity. We'll get to that in a minute. The W, um, other brands use D or AD. Right. means it has the dispersant in it, okay. which is the thing that will help to really capture nasty contaminants and hold them in suspension. Wow. Is that like a chemical or something? Or? Yeah. 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 It's a, it, a polar molecule, if it's anybody knows what that means. It's, it's <laughs> atomic, yeah. I think. Um, but it will really prevent mainly sludge buildup in areas where you don't want it. Mm. Um, so longer term, if you've got a you know, regular flat like Hermie or Continental, mm. once you've done your bedding, the minimum you want is a dispersant oil. Right. There are a few old engines that can't use dispersant, mm -hmm. but this is for general aviation. Right. Jolly good. The third one here. W80 plus. Yeah. So we've plus, got we've got the dispersant cleaner yeah. in there. We've got 80 viscosity. Yeah. But what does the plus mean? Now the plus is the thing that the manufacturer is going to use to say you must buy my oil and no one else is quite uh. as good. But actually, in this aeroshell and in the total and in several other brands, the plus is a package of anti-wear, anti-corrosion additives. Right. 
Uh, we've had quite good experience with them yeah. on underused engines, people doing less than 100 hours a year. Mm. We think the corrosion inhibitors help slightly. Is there any reason why you wouldn't use a plus? Yeah, some engines can't take the additives, right. some older engines. And if you're in the bedding in stage, yep. the anti-wear additives will actually prevent yep. effective bedding at the cylinder wall. So that's when you would not use a plus or a total call as XPD. Hmm. All the manufacturers have a name for it. This has a lycoming additive in it, which isn't strictly required in most lycoming engines, but it's a selling point. Yeah. But we've had relatively good experience with the Aeroshell W80 Plus and the Total XPD, okay. from a, purely from a corrosion point of view, right. not anything else. No. And the final one on our list, W15W-50. Yeah. This looks like the stuff that I put in my petrol and engine on my car. That's because they're using the, the SAE viscosity and because it's a multi-viscosity oil. SAE viscosity. Right, the SAE Society <laughs> of Automotive come? Engines. <laughs> oh, okay. It's about half, the, to confuse you, it's half the number that they put on these roughly. Right. So 100 commercial grade is 50. Now what, what's the, what's, what does that all mean? All right, those? so we've got the W as the disperser. Yep. 15W mean, is 15 winter. Right. And that means when it's cold, it's made from a base oil which has a very low viscosity, SAE 15, mm. but they've put viscosity index improvers in it. In theory, when it's hot in the engine, it behaves as well wow. as the W100. So it's a miracle, really. It is a magic, it's isn't it? It's an absolute miracle. Yeah. There's, there's a but. Right. Some say viscosity index improvers are not the best lubricants. Mm -hmm. You're contaminating the oil with a chemical. And most of these, which are on the market, are semi-synthetic. Mm -hmm. There's one that isn't, I think it's Philips, mm -hmm. um, which people like a lot. Right. Now, I'm gonna say, in our temperate climate here in the southern UK, you don't need it, so don't use it. Right. Because the, you don't the need benefits that. don't yeah. outweigh the, the possible downside. If you're using Avgas, synthetics don't hold the contamination quite so well. Um, and it, there isn't really a need for it in the southern UK. If yeah. you're in, a, in northern you know, Siberia, Alaska, somewhere like that, and even when you preheat your engine, oil is going to be really thick, you might need it. Right. Let's talk about thickness then. Yeah. Viscosity. Let's do it. Because the number on there, the 15, the 50, the 80, the 100, that's the viscosity number. So viscosity, thinking back to my physics, and is about how thick the oil is, yeah. presumably. So resistance to flow. Right. Um, and the viscosity that you must use is that specified for, by the engine manufacturer right. for the ambient temperature at startup. Right. So if you're starting, if you're operating in a cold climate, you're going to be using a lighter oil or possibly a multigrade. You right. might be right down to SA30, which is 65. Right. Um, which we haven't got here. The, the lightest we use in the UK is really 80. Right. It just doesn't get that cold here. Um, so, yeah. But the important thing about viscosity is even if we look at one grade of oil, mm. how, it, how massively it varies with temperature. Mm -hmm. And we can have a look at that. Oh, right. We're going to do a little bit of an experiment yeah. then. So this is at room temperature. Yeah. And this is what, which viscosity is this This one? is all 80. All this three of these samples are going to be okay. 80. You I've go. just got to grab one from the freezer. Oh, one from the freezer. <laughs> go on then. Okay. This really is like an episode of Blue Peter. While Aidan runs to the kitchen for his prop, let me thank Aero Anglia for supporting the making of this video. Without Aero Anglia and Aidan's time, this content wouldn't be possible. Aero Anglia is a light aircraft maintenance organisation based at Elmset in Suffolk. I trust the team there to maintain my Piper Arrow Golf India Victor. They are extremely diligent and knowledgeable. If you're currently unhappy with your maintenance provider, do give Aero Anglia a call. And if you want to see India Victor in the flesh, so to speak, I'm taking it to Aero Expo this June at Northampton Cywell. I'm hoping to set up some fan meetups, so book your tickets now. Fly-in slots are booking up fast, I hear. Don't delay, get on their website today. Right, here's what one. Have I you got there? Here's, here's one I froze earlier. <laughs> w80, probably under minus 20 now. Right. Room temperature, if you can pass me that this one. This one. Okay. That's probably 80, 90 degrees C. It's been in boiling water. Right. And um, let's just let's just see what happens. These are all the same viscosity, just different temperatures. Right. That one's not coming out. 
That one's, one's flown reasonably quickly. Wow. And that one's halfway. Okay. So we can see there that yep. the temperature is affecting the flow. And you can see the danger of using it a, a too thick an oil in a freezing temperature. In freezing temperatures. So your engine manufacturer will tell you the grade to use according to ambient temperature at startup. Because obviously, if you try and start up with that, the oil pump won't be able to pump it. No. Um, so you would use the multi-grade freezes and it still pours. Right. Remarkably. Well, so to conclude then, Aidan, we, we can obviously see that we need the right oil for the ambient temperature that we're yep. flying at and our POH will tell us, yep. or airframe manual will tell us yep. what one we want. Discuss it with you engineer, yep. uh, they will no doubt have their preferred. They may have an opinion, they may have another brand. And I suppose what the other takeaway from this is if, if we're not flying a lot, yep. then we might want to think about corrosion prevention. Definitely. That's the only one of the few recommendations that we probably would make here is if you are less than 100 hours a year. As soon as you've done your brake in and if your engine can use it, use one with a good additive package Fun. formulated to prevent corrosion. Fantastic. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, new feature inside the hangar. We'll be back again soon with another episode uh, with Aidan. Today, of course, we've talked about oil. Uh, if you have something, you've a burning question that you've had about how things work in your engine, or if there are parts that you're interested in knowing how they work, um, or a question that you'd like to ask Aidan that we can perhaps do in one of these videos, then do get in touch. Aidan, thank you. No problem. And fly safely, my friends. Bye-bye.